What is Fate? Lecture by Paramahansa Yogananda, November 16th, 1939. Is fate a mysterious, implacable, outside force that governs human destiny? This concept has influenced many to believe that what is to be will be, and nothing can be done about it. Fate does mean something ordained, but it is ordained by you yourself through the operation of the law of, of causation or karma. God gave you the freedom to choose how you will act, but the law of causation governs the outcome according to the nature of the action. Thus every act becomes a cause that will produce a certain kind of effect. When you have set in motion a particular cause, the effect will inevitably correspond to that cause. Whether you do good or evil, you must reap the results of that action. So day by day, you are creating the causes that determine your own fate. Perhaps at the dinner table you say, I will have a little bit more, please. After you have finished, you say, I shouldn't have eaten so much. This is human nature. We are the funniest of all God's creatures. We call ourselves intelligent human beings, but we are slaves to our desires. Because you eat that little bit extra every day, you suddenly find you have heart trouble or stomach pains. Then sadly you ask, why did this have to happen to me? I must have been fated to be sick. But that is not so. You forgot about having eaten that little bit more when you should have used self-control and taken a little bit less. If a motor is overloaded and you add to that load, naturally it will be hard on the motor. It may give up. In the same way, you overwork your motor of digestion. That was the cause and it was created by you. Your stomach pains from ulcers or indigestion are merely the result. Why are we all different from one another? Behind the light in every little bulb is a great dynamic current. Beneath every little wave is the vast ocean, which has become the many waves. So it is with human beings. God made every man in his image and gave each one freedom. But you forget the source of your being and the unequaled power of God that is an inherent part of you. The possibilities of this world are limitless. The potential progress of man is limitless. Yet it appears that each individual is born with definite limitations. These are the results of the operation of the law of karma. All the causes of ill health or sudden financial failure or other troubles that come upon you without warning and without your knowing why were created by you in the past, in this or in previous incarnations, and have been silently germinating in your consciousness. If you had the wisdom, you could have lessened the effects by right thinking and right living. But you lead a life that is generally unconscious of the possible results of your thoughts and actions. So when anything upsetting happens without apparent reason, you say, well, it was fate. Your failure or sickness or other troubles started with unwise actions in past lives, and the effects of those causes have been brewing within 
waiting for the right time to bubble over. Disease, health, failure, success, inequalities, equality, early death, long life. All these are outgrowths of the seeds of actions we have sown in the past. They cause us to come into this world with varying degrees of goodness or evil within us. So even though God made us in His image, no two people are alike. Each has used his God-given free choice to make something different of himself. This is why some people suffer for the slightest reason. Others become angry at the least provocation. And there are those who eat endlessly without any self-control. Did God make them that way? No. Each person has made himself the way he is. There would be no justice in this world if God had arbitrarily made us the way we are. I sometimes think God must be watching in amazement this big zoo of human beings here, blaming him because they have a headache or stomach ache, or are always getting into trouble. Don't blame God or anyone else if you are suffering from disease financial problems, emotional upsets. You created the cause of the problem in the past and must make a greater determination to uproot it now. Three ways to deal with the effects of actions. Fate means that a cause has operated to produce an effect. You can change it if you know the way. However, it is not always easy. One, you can minimize the effect of an action. Two, you can resist the effect. Three, you can completely stop it. Why do people go to doctors? Because that is one way to minimize the effects of wrong actions. The physical way to lessen an illness or overcome it may be found in such remedies as proper diet, exercise, or medication. One self-realization student was recently healed by, of ulcers by a diet of bread and milk. But lessening or removing effects may not necessarily eliminate the cause. Under favorable circumstances, the cause may send forth new effects in the same or a different form. To resist the effects of karma is to use common sense remedies, but rely more on the power of the mind. Refuse to accept any limiting condition. Affirm and believe in health, strength, success, even in the face of contradictory evidence. The effects of your actions have much less power to hurt you when you do not allow the mind to give in to them. Remember that. You can also resist by counteracting the bad effects of past wrong actions with good effects set in motion by present right actions, thus preventing the creation of an environment favorable to the fruition of your bad karma. But how are you going to completely break the hold that fate has on you? The only way that you can permanently stop the undesirable effects of past wrong actions is by removing the cause of those effects. Harmful past life seed tendencies must be cauterized from the brain. Then there will be no reoccurrence of any type of illness or other troubles arising from them. Roast them in the fire of wisdom. Man suffers because of his errors and the root cause of error is ignorance. 
Therefore seek the wisdom born of meditation, which removes forever from within you the darkness of ignorance. Krishna said, O Arjuna, as an kindled flame converts firewood into ashes, so does the fire of wisdom consume to ashes all karma. When you meditate deeply, God's light of divine wisdom cauterizes the seeds of undesirable karma stored in the deep recesses of consciousness in the brain. Never give up your good efforts. Let nobody say that you are finished, all washed up. Why should you give up? Why should you think, I can't change, I am old, I am finished? You can change every day, any time you want to. I have noticed that some people remain the same year after year. I call them psychological antiques. And I have seen others who, no matter what comes, are always filled with ambition, doing something to improve themselves. That is the right kind of living. I used to know the elderly wife of a senator. She was a fanatic about liquor, and when her husband died, she threw it all out of the house. This woman was a live wire. She exercised regularly, took up dancing, and was very active in useful projects. According to her view, being old was no reason for her to give up all her interests and prepare for death. She kept on this way for quite a few years and remained enthusiastic, healthy, and happy. She was no ordinary person, and I very much admired her spirit. Many people grow old before their time. You don't have to give up just because you are 75 or 80. Never tell your age, nor let anyone pity you that you are getting old. Keep yourself youthfully erect and alert. Feel young. It is the spirit within that keeps you young. Be enthusiastic. There are lots of young people who are already psychologically old and as good as dead. They have no ambition, no enthusiasm, and they don't try to change. You are finished only when you say or think you are. No matter how others judge you, your own decree of defeat is the worst of all. You give up. The moment you say, I have tried, but I can't contact God, you are through. You won't get to Him. Some teachers say that if one doesn't start his search for God before he is 30 years old, he cannot find Him. This is not true. God will come to you anytime you are willing to make the effort. It is true. However, that the earlier one starts to seek God or truth earnestly, the easier it is because habits have not yet become thoroughly formed. But Krishna taught that in spite of negative habits, one can find God if he earnestly seeks Him. Even a consummate evildoer who turns away from all else to worship me exclusively may be counted among the good because of his righteous resolve. He will fast become a virtuous man and obtain unending peace. Tell all assuredly, O Arjuna, that my devotee never perishes. So if you make the determination, I will keep on seeking God, even if I drop dead while trying, then know that you will feel God's presence. You will find that He responds. 
How meditation changes your fate. If you really want to rid yourself of present bad habits and to escape those decrees of fate that have caused you suffering, you have no greater recourse than meditation. Every time you meditate deeply on God, beneficial changes take place in the patterns of your brain. Suppose you are a financial failure, or a moral failure, or a spiritual failure. Through deep meditation, affirming, I and my Father are one, you will know that you are the child of God. Hold on to that ideal. Meditate until you feel a great joy. When joy strikes your heart, God has answered your broadcast to Him. He is responding to your prayers and positive thinking. This is a distinct and definite method. First, meditate upon the thought, I and my Father are one. Trying to feel a great peace and then a great joy in your heart. When that joy comes, say, Father, Thou art with me. I command Thy power within me to cauterize my brain cells of wrong habits and past seed tendencies. The power of God in meditation will do it. Rid yourself of the limiting consciousness that you are a man or a woman. Know that you are the child of God. Then mentally affirm and pray to God. I command my brain cells to change, to destroy the grooves of bad habits that have made a puppet out of me. Lord, burn them up in thy divine light. And when you will practice the self-realization techniques of meditation, especially Kriya Yoga, you will actually see the light of God baptizing you. But you must concentrate. You must deeply commune with God. Night is the best time for this. How wonderful it is to try to commune with God then, when the world around you is quiet. I have received my greatest experiences with God at night before I go to sleep. I never even think of sleep if I don't want to. I want to be with the Lord at night, and He takes care of me. The most important consideration is to be with God. I never worry about the future or the past. I just live each day for God, that is all. I will do my best, whatever I can, but I don't worry about anything. I am working only for God in this world, and I don't care what happens to me. What can happen that I will not still be with the Lord? When I was in India, I wrote to those at Mount Washington, I never miss you all because I am with you evermore. And when this wave shall be gone from the surface of the ocean of life, somewhere else I will be. But whether here or there, we will all be in the same ocean of life in God. So when you shall know God, you will never grieve for your friends and loved ones when you are parted from them. Many friends that I knew in the past I have found again in this life, and many who know me now shall know me again hereafter. When I first came to America, I saw the faces of some of you in vision. That is why I wrote sleeping memories of friends once more to be did greet me over the sea. I was feeling very sad as the ship came into the harbor of this strange land. I was apprehensive 
and my India was hushed in the distant darkness of thousands of miles. But then I saw in vision the faces of many here whom I had known before in previous lives, and a great joy came over me. I know that I knew Madame Gali Kurci and her husband before. One day, a record was playing, and I asked, Whose record is it? Play it again. The voice was Gali Kurci's. I am going to meet her, I said. Later one night in Chicago, a friend came and told me, You know Madame Gali Kurci is here in the city. I feel you should meet her. I was given a letter of introduction, and others tried to approach her on my behalf. But the tickets for all her concerts were sold out. At last the manager himself gave me his son's ticket. When Madame Galicurci and I met after the concert, she greeted me and said, I scolded them for not making a ticket available to you sooner. We have been friends ever since, and she and her husband follow this path faithfully. Be a jailbreaker from the prison of fate. Although life seems capricious, uncertain and full of all kinds of troubles, still we are always under the guiding, loving protection of God. We are in a sort of jail, imprisoned by the consequences of our wrong actions. But we can break out of this prison and be one with God again. Though we are surrounded by the bars of fate, evil, moral troubles, weaknesses, sickness, financial difficulties, we have the power within us to sunder them. In your youth, you feel you have the power to conquer the world, but as you get older, you feel you have lost it. Day after day, you prove that you are a slave to your environment and habits. Instead, day after day, you should affirm, I am the conqueror of all. I may die, but I will die free in the bosom of God. I will not remain behind the bars of bad habits, the bars of fate, this freedom will come if you meditate every day and strengthen your willpower. Not God, but you created the jail. You forged those bars and so you must break them. You must be jailbreakers, breaking out of this prison of flesh. Escape from every jail cell of bad habits, attachment, emotion, desires, life and death. The bars of this jail in which your soul is imprisoned can be severed with the saw of wisdom. The more you will saw at them in meditation, the freer you will become through the power of God. In him you will know that this life is like a dream. It is just a drama. Dear ones, I very much enjoy these meetings with you because I don't come here to give a lecture. I talk to you only with the consciousness of spirit and not in a mechanical way. I speak to you what comes from my soul. I seek only those who are deeply interested in finding God. Such lovely souls I meet here. And such wonderful souls live here in Mount Washington, Ashram. Years and years, one peace and harmony. I give thanks to the Lord for all his glory. It is not always easy to do good, but the greatest thing in life 
is to live in the castle of your own clear conscious, knowing you are pleasing God. He is the only answer, for in God lies the greatest happiness. Over and above performing faithfully all one's duties, taking shelter in me, it is by my pleasure a devotee obtains the eternal, unchangeable state. You should love and bless all, and try to see God in everyone, even the error-stricken. And no matter how hard it seems at times, you must follow the path of truth. Then you will break the bars of fate. Excerpts from the book The Divine Romance by Paramahansa Yogananda